Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify trigonometric expressions. Now, when simplifying trigonometric expressions, basically all we're trying to do is simplify them down to one single uh, trigonometric expression, you know, one quantity, or down to a single number. Okay. And basically, the simplifying process is just a way to us to start preparing for what's going to come ahead as far as verifying and solving and so forth. So basically, all we're going to do is just try to. You can see here I have expressions that have multiple trigonometric um, uh, functions within them. So basically what we're going to do is just simplify them down to one or down to one number. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, but one of the best ways that I like to kind of look at that is obviously knowing your trigonometric identities is extremely important. Um, however, you know one of the first things we always like to do when you're kind of getting started with this, one of the easiest things, especially when you get kind of stuck, is always to convert everything in terms of sines and cosines. And there's going to be some different operations that we'll get into some other videos. But for right now, um, I think mostly everything we can do is by applying the trigonometric identities and as well as just converting things to sines and cosines should be enough for us. So if we're going to multiply, if we're going to multiply sine of x times secant of x, what I can do is I can rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines. So therefore, this is really the sine of x times secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine of x. So if I was going to multiply these across, I would come up with sine of x over cosine of x. Well, I can simplify that. Sine over cosine is going to be equivalent to tangent of x. And that would be our simplified expression. Over to the next one, before I even multiply this, I have tan of negative x. So going back to our um, trigonometric identities, let me just make sure. Yeah, make sure we know that our identities, which of these would be our even odd identities, we know that tangent of negative x is the same thing as negative tangent of x times cosine of x. Well, now to simplify this further, again, we know that tangent is the same as sine of x over cosine of x. So I'll rewrite that as sine of x over cosine of x. The negative sign is really just in front of everything, times cosine of x. And you can always put that over 1. So now, knowing our division property, when you have the same term in the de numerator and denominator, those are going to divide to 1. And we're just left with a negative sign of x. OK, um, in this example, now I have three terms that I'm multiplying. So the best thing we're going to want to do, again, is rewrite them in terms of sines and cosines. So tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. Cosecant of x is going to be the same thing as 1 over sine of x. And cosine of x we can rewrite as over 1. Now, all I'm simply going to do is divide out the same numbers in the numerator and in the denominator. Well, the sine of x divides the 1, and the cosine of x divides the 1. So we're left with 1 over 1, which is just going to leave us with 1. Now, once we get into some fractions, this is what makes things even more special and more fun, right? So the first thing we're going to do here is, again, just rewrite these in terms of sines and cosines. So cosecant of theta is going to be 1 over sine of theta divided by 1 over cosine of theta. Now, what do you do when you have a fraction divided by another fraction? Well, to get your fraction off the denominator, what we need to do is multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by cosine of theta over 1. And I'm going to do that on the numerator and the denominator. Since I'm multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same term, I'm producing equivalent fractions. So I'm actually not going to be changing the problem at all. Well, any number, any fraction multiplied by a reciprocal is going to just multiply to 1. Then I'm left with up top is cosine over sine, which we know cosine over sine is going to be cotangent. Cosine of theta over sine of theta is going to leave us with cotangent of theta, as sine over cosine gives us tangent. All right, so now we have tangent squared over secant squared. Well, they're squared, but we're going to do the exact same thing as we did before. So I'm kind of running out of space here, and I apologize for that. So I'm going to kind of push this over a little bit. And I'm going to rewrite this here as let's see, sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. And secant squared is going to be 1 over cosine squared of theta. Well, just like I did before, now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. And by multiplying by the reciprocal, it's going to be cosine squared of theta over 1 times cosine squared of theta over 1. Okay. Now when you multiply those, you can obviously see that those are now going to multiply the 1. My cosine squared of theta divides into uh, my cosine squared. So that's just going to leave me with a, let's use a red here, 
sine squared of theta times cosine of theta. Now, um, they still have a sine and a cosine, but we cannot simplify this really any further. So that is going to be your simplified firm, even though we do have two of them. And um, I know the directions I said was to get them down to a single element. Well, this example, actually, we're going to have sine and cosine in our simplified version. But that would be our simplified. It's not a fraction anymore. So we did technically simplify it. Um, now we're going to get into make sure you know your Pythagorean identity. So we talked about the even odd identities. We also have to make sure we know that our we also have to make sure we know our Pythagorean identities. So in this case, knowing your Pythagorean identities, um, tangent squared plus 1 is the exact same thing as secant. So I can rewrite this as 1 over, I'm sorry, it's the same thing as secant squared of theta. Secant squared of theta. Well, 1 over secant squared of theta, we can rewrite that as the same thing as cosine squared of theta. All right, in the next example, um, again, we're going to do kind of like what we did over here. But before I get to that, again, I like to rewrite everything in terms of sines and cosines. So by doing that, I have tangent of theta. So that's going to be sine of theta over cosine of theta times cotangent of theta, which is going to be um, cosine of theta over sine of theta. And that's all going to be divided by 1 over sine of theta. So now, again, just like I did before, when you have fractions in the numerator and denominator, to get rid of your fraction in the denominator, you're going to multiply by your reciprocal, which in this case is going to be sine of theta over 1. So I'll multiply by sine of theta over 1 in the top and in the bottom. Those are not going to multiply the 1. And now we do just like kind of we did up here. We simplify terms that are exactly the same in the numerators and in the denominators. And what we are left with now is just sine of theta. All right, um, in the next example here, I have sine of theta um, times cosecant of theta minus sine of theta. Well, to simplify this, you can see just like when we did with numbers, when you have a number outside of a, you know, parentheses with an expression in there, you've got to apply the distributive property. So I'm going to multiply by both of these. So therefore, I'm left with sine of theta times cosecant of theta. And then sine of theta minus sine of theta is going to be negative sine squared of theta. Now, we can rewrite these. Um, or you can see that these are reciprocals, reciprocal functions of each other. So they're just going to go down to 1 minus sine squared of theta. Then again, knowing back our Pythagorean identities, 1 minus sine squared of theta is simply just equal to cosine squared of theta. Uh, the next one, I have cosecant of x plus tangent of x um, plus secant of x. So to, I can't add them. They're not the same trigonometric function. So I'm going to rewrite them in terms of sines and cosines. So cosecant of x is the same thing as 1 over sine of x. Tangent of x is sine of x over cosine of x. Plus secant of x is 1 over cosine of x. Well, again, I can't add them until I multiply these out. And I notice that here, when I multiply these out, I'm left with 1 over cosine of x plus 1 over cosine of x. Well, since these are fractions, you can see that you can combine them with the same denominators. And they have the same denominator of cosine. So my final answer is 2 over cosine of x. I just added the denominators. And really, 2 over cosine of x is the same thing as 2 over secant of x. All right, in the last example here, uh, now I have cosecant of x times 1 minus cosecant squared. Now, you might be, it might be, um, Quick we say, well, let's distribute these, right? It's pretty obvious. Hey, you got a number just like we did before. However, always whenever you see a squared, always look for your Pythagorean identities. And when I look at this, I know, oh, 1 minus cosine squared there, that's a Pythagorean identity. That is actually equal to sine squared of x. Then I'm multiplying that by cosecant of x. So now I'll just rewrite that. I'll rewrite cosec I'll rewrite this all in terms of sines and cosines. And then I can see that I can simply divide 1 sine of x into the sine squared of x, just leaving me with the final answer of sine of x. There you go. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you simplify trigonometric expressions. Thanks.